<sighs> when you find yourself led astray, home should be your next destination. Mm -hmm. I already got this message today. That is good then. Do you want to speak? The strength of twelve is in a strong foundation of threes. Mm -hmm. Four in a nucleotide, but three in leadership. Mm -hmm. One follower remains the key to the whole system. The symbol of four-sided diamond that never sparkles. Pyoto. Vien tiopio. Antotoko kostir te tiopia. Stita. Onokoto kotaria santita. Kurelo shotito otoposato. Sounds pleasant to me. Tuta to shoto ho hoda. Tisuto shoto to hada. You asked for everything to bring itself to you. Take yourself to it as well. Let it come to you and move forward to greet it. Because without your emotion, you will never find it. There is a degree of selfishness in all selflessness. Who are you? They called me Confucius. Aha! Uh -huh. Thank you for coming through. The way I think is not of this world, and never was. Mm -hmm. This world was a pleasant but awkward surprise. Mm -hmm. Welcome, thank you very much for coming through. That's a great honor. How was your name pronounced when you were incarnated here? Kafusa. Do you mind repeating? Kafusa. Kafusa. Ah. What's your origin? I'm from many places, mm. but originally from Alpha Centauri area. Uh -huh. Are you still watching us? There's not much to watch yet. Oh, so your focus of attention is not on Earth. The beauty of my vision to you will be coming in the future. I am watching, but only with one eye. Mm -hmm. When I set two eyes upon you, it will be time for you to move up. And I will be helping with that. Thank you. It is my way to bring forth those things that rise up and do not doubt that they are rising. Therefore, here I am today, and why I am here I am not quite sure, but you captured me somehow, uh -huh. and I am happy to see the earth again. Thank you for coming. What do you think about sexual love? It is necessary. Uh -huh. It can be the most beautiful thing for third dimension. Love and sexuality are beautiful. They mean little at times to some people. But in this realm, sexuality is honored. The rest of the world may take it for advantage at some point. But it is agreed that the pleasure that is brought from it rises you up if you are in that kind of frame, and brings you down if you look at it in that way. It is all in your perception where sexuality leads. Ah. So lead it upward. Okay. But remember, breaking bonds can upset and the balance of the beauty of sex. Mm -hmm. Therefore, there must be an agreement before bonds are broken. Because it would not be a broken bond to have permission, but it is a broken bond to do it clandestine. Uh -huh. Right. How about the love of people who are, cannot mm, have children, either because of age or because of biological incompatibility or they 
are the same sex or things like that. If children are their destiny, then children will be there. Some destinies do not require offspring. To me, sexuality is, until recently, was very closely tied with the idea of making children. Yes, it is for that purpose, but not that purpose alone. It is for joy and pleasure and bringing up the spirit. Many things are released in the system during sexuality that is positive. If you use it only for making children, then your closeness is not as it should be. Ah. Many people I meet these days are not very successful in mainstream world. They're poor and they have very poor social life. But yet they are very elevated spiritually. They are more out of this world than of this world. I preach to them success. Am I wrong? It depends. What is their version of success? Yes. You must preach success as they would have it heard so they could be successful. If you preach success that falls on deaf ears, then they will not. Right. What do you think of success in human life? Is it important? It can be, but not necessarily. It depends what your lesson is on this world. Oh. If you have come back to learn a lesson of challenge and diversity, then perhaps success will not come to you. But perhaps your lesson is in a successful realm with diversity and challenge as well. It depends what you have come back for. If you do not reach your goal in this life, which you have come back for, it must be repeated in another. Thank it you. does not have to be human. Wherever it is that you can learn the lesson the best, that form in time, that place in conforma conformity with your thoughts of that lesson, that is where you will go. You decide. You decide many things, but ultimately you will be given three choices. Three. And you choose one of the three where you come back to because they are the highest of your thoughts. You mean three choices before incarnation? Yes. To incarnate, to be a guide, or move on? Yes. Thank you. Um, many people have to choose, light workers at this, day, at this age, have to choose to stay with their families and their friends in 3D or move on into higher dimensional being where they cannot really communicate with other people, without, with their older friends who remain here in lower vibration. I disagree. Please expand on that. The moving to fourth dimension properly brings those around you with you. It brings fourth dimensional understanding to third dimension. And therefore, when you are in properly pulled through to the fourth dimension from the grounded earth, then you must understand that you will understand both fourth and third. But when you are talking to third, you must speak the fourth in ways that the third can understand. When you reach that enlightenment, you can talk to any dimension mm -hmm. because it will move you up and your communication skills will be understood by all. Many of light workers are so focused on things spiritual that the focus of attention is rarely down here. This is true. It is a dichotomy in your world at this time. You have separated yourself because you do not like this world and the way that it runs. And you see the future as it should be, but yet you were created third dimensional. So you must be third dimensional in every way before you can be fourth dimensional successfully and with meaning.
So in preaching the balance, you focus your attention, your attention on things above and move above, and you lose the balance. To rebalance, you have to focus on things down below and move back into the balance. The proper way to do it is to be in the third dimension first, or bring yourself to the third dimension and forget the fourth dimension completely for a small while. And then when you are connected to the third dimension and you understand it for what it is and why you are here, then the movement to the fourth dimension is purposeful and enlightening and has great meaning for your third dimensional life. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about dangers of channeling? There are dangers of challenging. Channeling. Challenging. I cannot say. Channel? Channeling, yes. yes. There are dangers in channeling when A, you are not protected, B, if you use mind-altering substances for pleasure and not for use in to receive greater knowledge or move into greater areas of understanding. You can leave yourself open if you are trying to channel while you are under the influence of something else, then you must be very careful that you are very intended and very directed. You must have that direction and understanding of control before you even start. Otherwise, it can lead you to places you do not want to go or to beings you do not want to meet. I'm a member of a community. And until now, I felt responsible for things that happen in the community. But I just realized if people want to go channel or if they want to leave their body, I have no way to help them to bring them back and keep them successful. So my responsibility is very limited to what I'm saying, but doesn't go beyond that. Uh, so my preaching from now on would be to ask them to be careful and not to go channel prematurely, not to invite beings in their bodies prematurely. Because some of them, some of the beings wouldn't even, some of the entities wouldn't even live after being invited. This is true. Intention is very much a part of what, what happens in your world. If their intention is just to be noteworthy because they are a channeler, this is not the direction they should take. It is dangerous to invite too many beings in. But, yet, in another sense, it is a gift to have many that are good. Some of our friends are trying to integrate their physical mind and their higher self. And it sounds a bit premature for them, I think. Is it advisable? It will not happen. They could, it cannot happen prematurely. It will be unsuccessful. Only when they are ready to do so, and the time is right for them in their life, will it be a successful venture. If they are not ready for this kind of venture, it will not succeed. There is no way for it to succeed. It, it will be futile. So what is the proper way of moving forward for them, for any of us? How they must ground first, of course. Many of them are not grounded yet. They think they are, but they are not down to the third dimension to where they understand where humanity really is, what, rem what huma being a human is all about. They haven't experienced enough. They haven't felt the effects of the awkwardness of humanity in their lives. And some of them have found this, but do not know how to reach out of that area into the fourth dimension, because the third dimension keeps their attention. Their life is drawn to it in a way that keeps them down at it. Now, the other side of the coin is that there is a fourth dimensional area that some reach or are born into that they cannot escape and therefore it augments 
their perception of what third dimension really is. And they have not really experienced it in any way, shape, or form the way it should be. But they have excluded themselves from the third dimension in many ways. Oh, certainly, there are some things they have to do. But they are not truly in the right realm at this time. Mm -hmm. And they will find themselves, and I will tell them now, if you cannot understand the world, you are not in it. Because it's not hard to understand many things. Now there comes times when the world gives you things that you cannot accept or do not want to accept. But yet, with your intentions, you can move through it and learn great lessons that can be shared with others who are going through similar things. And this way you are bringing up the vibration of the world through your lessons. So for those who are not of this world, who are more higher dimensional, your advice would be to go down and learn? I would... They were born into third dimension. I suggest they find it in whatever way they can. They may need someone to help them. We are here. There are many who can help. Uh -huh. So my simplistic advice was connect to people, socialize. Yes. Through others, you can find yourself. That's right. Can you speak about depression? What do you want me to speak about? Uh, many of us, especially the, those who are third dimensional, trying to get up, are dragged down with depression. Yes. It's kind of a sickness which goes, comes, visits us almost every day, almost every hour. You welcome it. Otherwise, it would not be there. There is something about it that you appreciate. What is it about depression that you appreciate? Does it give you more grounding? Does it give you a greater sense of humanity? Does it bring you to a place where you can deal with things in a way that is third dimensional? Or is it just some way to keep you from doing something else? Um, it feels like something very external. You do, you do something else and then it just comes as something external and you feel like yes. I want to extinguish it and you know, a little bit of that on that, like sugar sometimes elevates it, some sort of pleasure kind of keeps, keep, keeps you moving while it's hanging on to you. I see. You feel that it's externally stimulated and you bring that in internally? I'm trying to push it out. If it comes externally, why don't you push it out right away? It's, it doesn't go. Why? I don't know. I'm asking for a reason. Mm. To make you think about why it doesn't go, why it stays. There is a reason for everything. For every emotion that you feel. For everything that is here in the body, in the mind, in the soul, in the spirit, there is a reason for it to be there. It doesn't necessarily have to be a good and affirming or edifying reason, but it does have a reason. Yeah, from what you listed, it could be anything, right? One of the most usual would be to stop me from doing things. Yes, that is for many. Many stop doing things during depression. Why? It is an excuse that they do not feel like doing something. But yet, that is the time when it is most useful to do something. Because you know why. Once you start moving and put your mind to something else, the depression is gone. You do not dwell in depression while you're doing other things that are positively motivated. Now, if you are just doing drudgery every day, 
emptying the garbage or doing something like that, oh, depression can stay with you very easily. However, the very motion of you doing something helps it to come up just a little. And if there is something you resonate with, perhaps music, perhaps your children, perhaps the sunshine, perhaps the dogs, perhaps whatever, colors, that you can bring yourself out of this with. Make something positive out of something ordinary in your eyes. There is no such thing as ordinary. Once you see it for what it really is, it's extraordinary. Like per perhaps this shirt. You wear it a lot, right? Yes. You take it for granted, but it is extraordinary. Look at the colors in it. Look at the design. Look at the way that it feels on you. If you would understand that it is extraordinary to be here at this time is extraordinary, how can you be depressed? How can you understand depression unless you know that everything around you is extraordinary and you have no need to be because it is of this realm, extraordinary, no matter what it is, a speck of dust. If you would look at under a glass and bring it up to magnification, the design of the speck of dust would be extraordinary. Yeah. I am trying to just say that those things that dwell in you, the depression, the shadows, as they are called, can find themselves moving out of you with the change of your thought toward any particular item. You can see any particular item, or even sexuality, or the green grass, or whatever, it can bring you out of that shadow because it in itself is in your side, is on your perspective, is on your world, on your density, on your positive creation. Do you understand this? Of course. Thank you. And sometimes when we get caught or you humans. Even I had depression at some times. Do you know why? No. Because people would come to me and ask for wisdom. And I could not give some wisdom to everyone. Because you, they were not open to it. Mm -hmm. They could not understand it. Mm -hmm. And that made me sad. That brought me down. But you know what? I realized later that the very fact that I offered it, it went into the world in a positive energy and will affect someone else in some other realm or some other way that I do not even know or can fathom. But I do know the wisdom of this planet is that nothing is unchecked. Everything moves forward in its own way. The vibes of this planet move forward into the universe. And the higher it vibrates, the greater the universe will become in a positive way. But right now, the vibration of this world is quite dark. But we help it to resonate as high as we can. That is why only one eye is on your world at this time. Because it has not reached a place where I can grab hold to it and pull it out. It is still within itself, growing and trying to find a way. Which I, I could tell them a million times that it's within their grasp to do whatever they want at any time they want. But it is not within your understanding or 
your rationality to become something greater than what you think you are. But you are greater than you think you are. You are amazing beyond what you can understand. But it is not within your realm to be able to find that truth because it just does not exist within you yet. You may say, oh yes, I am greater than I am, but you don't really believe it. Your world holds you down to the beliefs of science and gravity and all those things around you that you have grown up with and understand as this world, this density. But yet, you are really not of this density. You are from spirit. Do you remember? Your body is third density. The spirit that lies within you from the oversoul is eternal and can do anything. But you have not grasped that yet. And that is part of the lesson here on this earth. When you come back to spirit and you look back onto this life and see how you've lived it, you will learn a lesson about what kind of density this is and what kind of limitations you've put on the spirit that is here. And that is a lesson. Nothing. And, but only one of many. But your lesson, as time goes forward, as you call it time, as the circle turns, let's call it that, you will find that as you move forward in this circle, you will find the soul and the light becoming more a part of that density. Much more. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on suicide from spiritual perspective? Suicide? Yeah. It is a dark term. When there are those that feel that there is nothing ahead, they see, they picture no light, they picture no possible scenario ahead of them that can be positive, mm -hmm. then they choose to extinguish what they feel is a negative existence. However, what they have done is they have put a shield over the light in their body, a shield over any kind of truth, because it is a lie that there is nothing greater outside of the existence that they are feeling at that moment. They are creating, however, a dark existence from that moment on. The thing is about that, if they would understand that they are creating it, then they would understand, then they could stop it. But in this density of third, there are those that cannot even see that far. They cannot see beyond the first layer of their aura. They cannot see beyond the first density of their heart. And therefore they will return to spirit, having not learned the lessons of this life that they should have. And therefore will have to repeat it again. There will be consequences to that as well, because in spirit, they will have to learn to shake off that negativity that they once came out of. Because when you are in that density and you release yourself from it, some of it stays with you. And they will be taught how to get rid of it. And that will be the lesson that will be learned from that life. It will have to come afterwards. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. Um, how do you see Jesus? Is it your sort of partner? 
I see Jesus many times. His oversoul is immense. It's wonderful. I don't know, know why you would want to just see him. You have to experience him and love him, know him as love, know him as he is, and ex just experience who he, who he is as a soul, and who he is as a, an ascended master. Is he similar to you in many ways? Are you in about the same level of mission? We have our missions, yes. We speak in different ways because this is the way that we are to present ourselves. His presentation is different than mine. His love is different than mine in some ways. He is a being unto himself in the spirit, just as we all are, but of course in a greater way with understanding and knowledge. But to compare ourselves would not be necessary. We are not so different, but we are not so alike. All right, I understand Jesus as an energy and personality, which is responsible of us for ascension of many races. Is it right? He does help with the ascension of many races. That is correct. And do you do the same? I do the same. Yeah. And I also heard in another channeling that he manifested here, maybe incarnated or maybe manifested for a short time, hundreds of times, not only as Jesus, but otherwise. Yes. Physically and met other people and taught other people. Yes, this is true. Do you do the same? I have. But I do it more on other planets than this one. He is more apt to come to this planet, where I am more apt to go elsewhere. I just recently came about, came around the idea of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. A biblical character, yes. A teacher and priest. Is there anything beyond what you, I can read here. Can you tell me? There is much beyond what you can read here. Melchizedek's volume has not been written. He is far beyond what is written in these chronicles here. But uh, once again, his chronicles have been written on other worlds. So, what would you have me tell you about him? Something exciting. That he, could, that he was a healer also, that he was a great one for love and understanding, that he could manifest things in his life that few could do. He could actually cause things to appear because he believed. His belief system was in such a way that he was beyond the third dimension, yet fully part of it. Uh -huh. And therefore, he could create things in the third dimension from other dimensions. And that is where you are heading, eventually. Oh. Thank you. Uh, please pass my invitation to Melchizedek to appear in the channel. We want to meet him. Melchizedek. Yes. I will cer certainly pass that along. Thank you much. I'm going to go now. Thank you very you much. You have enough to think about in this realm yes. right now. Thank you. Your depression should not be here with you as much as it is. Because you are a very successful thinker. You just have to learn when to stop thinking and start doing. Thank you. Can you give us a blessing? Certainly. What would you like it to be about? Just the third density? <laughs> yeah. Because I remember it well. Splendorous wake of sun and sea on sand I walk and see the prince 
disappear behind me. O oh, great ocean, you are so powerful, yet weak in the eyes of the universe. And thunder though you may, your voice is but a squeak in the universe, not even. They probably can't even hear it on Andromeda. But I understand your beauty, your grace, your intricacies, your life, moving into life and out of life. It is like a beautiful ghostly tapestry that comes in and out with colors and sounds, screams and whispers. Yes, this place around me, in the temples, in the homes, in the courtyards, it is all the same, raveled and unraveled, many millions of times, spoken and unspoken. There are many things greater than myself. I feel it, but yet I am not greater than myself, or am I? We tend to believe that which we are told, that which we are understanding to be who we are. But yet, grasp this, you are of spirit. And spirit moves not only in third dimension. Spirit moves in every dimension. So take heart. There are things about you that the wind cannot blow off of you or into you, and the sun cannot melt or burn out of you. But only you are in control of the flame within. And only you can ask help to control the flame as well. So children and mankind, Dwell fully in your life. Dwell fully in the wind, the rain, the sun, the shadows. Because there are lessons in all parts of the universe to be learned. And in this realm, there are many lessons that are valuable. Valuable for you. Find a love a resonation, a dream, a vision. Don't let go. Because if you believe, you can create. Because you are a God creature, made from God, able to do the things that gods can do. Take heed. Wonderful, thank you much. You are welcome. Come again, please. I will go now. Thank you. Much peace on your life. Thank you. Let it become more tranquil and uplifting. And may you dwell in a world in third dimension that brings you joy and all the things that you manifest. Thank you.